Do you know how to wash your hands? During the corona pandemic, hand washing became more important than ever. Wash your hands for 20 seconds with soap and warm water. Hand wash. Hand washing. So we can end this pandemic. You can wash your hands for religious reasons or wash them in innocence. You're doing it wrong. Mostly we wash our hands to stop disease from spreading, but not everyone has access to hand washing facilities. That kills 600,000 people each year, a lot more than homicides. The benefit of hand washing is obvious to us. It is particularly important for you to wash your hands after going to the toilet. But it wasn't always like this. We've only been washing our hands for hygienic reasons for about 150 years. Before that, even doctors didn't wash their hands between patients. Don't forget to dry them with a towel. Covid's on the rise again, so let's talk about hand washing. Where was the benefit of hand washing first discovered? When did hand washing become the norm? How did we get here? Welcome to wash your hands to keep yourself and others healthy. Billy's parents did worry because he was so careless about washing when he should have washed. Wash, wash, wash. They just want me to be a sissy. It's not sissy to be clean. Personal cleanliness can help to protect you from many of the serious illnesses. Let me introduce myself. Soapy's the name, partner. Is your cleanliness giving the picture you want it to give? For the start of the story, we have to go back to Vienna of the 1800s. The Allgemeines Krankenhaus was a teaching hospital with the largest maternity ward in the world. The ward had two wings. In the one wing, male students were told how to deliver babies. And in the other, trainee midwives did the job. So you have to understand that this isn't a hospital like the ones we have now, that are clean, hygienic, disinfected all the time. Uh, research on hygiene wasn't that advanced. Because of this, women that delivered could develop childbed fever. They would get extremely hot, sweat like dogs, and have heartbeats of up to 140 beats per minute. This is all before antibiotics were invented, so an infection could be deadly. In fact, childbed fever could kill up to 90% of patients. How did it happen? Well, doctors at the time had various ideas. First, they blamed women, because women had weaker constitutions, they wore too restrictive clothing, or they were walking too soon after giving birth. Right. The other option they offered was bad air. There was an old theory that stench could lead to disease. In the Allgemeine Krankenhauser there was to be a new theory. Igna Semmelweis was a Hungarian-born physician that came to Vienna to be an assistant doctor. He's a bit of a strange fellow, with mood swings and a very strong will. You know the one colleague that's good but also impossible to work with? Well, that's our Ignaz. He noticed a difference in the mortality rates between the clinics run by men and women. Look at this graph. The male ward's mortality rate is a lot higher, mostly because of the childbed fever. Semmelweis wasn't the only one who picked this up. He writes how women beg to be led in a female-led clinic. They actually prefer to give birth on the street than attend the male clinic. And the weird part, street births are actually a lot safer than going to the male clinic. So what's going on? Ignaz has a few ideas. For one, he notices that every time a woman dies, a priest comes to give the last sacrament. He walks by and he rings a bell. Maybe this gives women a taste of the future and they get a fever? Well, he reroutes the priest and then nothing. The reason why women are dying is a lot more sinister than a scary priest. If you're in medical school nowadays and you have to learn the trade, you don't start by operating on people that are alive. That would be dangerous. You first learn to operate on dead people. In the time of Semmelweis, this was a brand new teaching method, learning by doing. So the men in Vienna, they learn about the body by training on cadavers. And midwives, they didn't have this training. So the male students are inspecting and dissecting dead patients in the morning. They don't use gloves or wash their hands. And here comes the fun part. In the afternoon, they go to the maternity ward. They inspect the pregnant women and help deliver babies without changing clothes, without washing their hands. They're actually covered in old blood and pieces of skin and are delivering babies. So yeah, maybe that could be a problem. Remember, it's easy to condemn folks in these times. 
but they had an overwhelmingly different medical hypothesis. Bad stench equals disease. So the fact there's dudes running around delivering babies, even though they had their hands in corpses in the morning, doesn't give Semmelweis any insight. But then something else does. During one of the autopsies, a student accidentally hurts a colleague of Semmelweis. This colleague dies an excruciating death shortly after. The symptoms this colleague suffers are the same as the dying women. So then he finally sees the light. It's also quite a bummer killing your teacher because you accidentally cut him. Yikes. So Samuelis has this new theory. He thinks cadaverous material is a source of infection. Basically, bits of dead people. He was wrong. It's germs. But he does something that does help. He makes his students wash their hands after operating on the cadavers. This instantly drops the death rate by a huge amount. He seems to have found something that works against childbed fever. It must be said he isn't the first to say that washing hands is important. Florence Nightingale, she said so. The American Oliver Wendell Holmes also came to the insight that washing hands is important. But Holmes was ridiculed by his contemporaries. There's this one guy that goes, doctors are gentlemen and gentlemen's hands are clean. Well, that settles it, I guess. I mean, you can sort of understand his position. These are doctors doing their best helping people. And the idea that your good conduct is actually responsible for a lot of deaths, that just doesn't go down that well. Samwise doesn't know about other people campaigning for hand washing. So he starts to do it himself. He writes letters, he gives talks, and in some places his ideas are actually implemented. But his message on the whole doesn't go down well. Remember, Ignaz himself was a difficult person. For one, he was completely sure he had found the one and only explanation for childbed fever. So, according to him, everything was caused by cadaverous material and autopsies. But that just wasn't the case, because childbed fever also happened in places where no autopsies were done. So his colleagues rejected that part of his idea. And also, Samwise didn't give a lot of evidence for his claims. And there's also something to be said about the way he approaches his colleagues. Take this letter Ignaz writes to a colleague. According to Ignaz, this doctor is responsible for a massacre. It's all his fault. The murders must stop. Or take this letter. If a doctor doesn't change his teaching, well, Ignaz would declare him with God in the world as his witness as a murderer. Not really your typical academic discourse. In general, people don't really like to be called murderers when they think they're doing a good job. Ignaz's insight doesn't change medical history. He is forgotten in his time and dies an early death. But a medical breakthrough does come through a bit later because of theoretical work. Pasteur formulates the idea of germ theory, that microorganisms can cause disease. And it's the physician Jacob Lister that starts to clean his hands and his instruments before he works with every patient. Yes, doctors actually didn't clean either their hands and their instruments between patients. And then this is a huge breakthrough and germ theory wins the day. So what do we learn from this story? Well, Semmelweis, he wasn't really accepted by his peers, but he also kept to one explanation. He didn't give enough evidence and he was kind of a dick to his peers. He does live on in a psychological phenomenon called the Semmelweis reflex. This is a metaphor for the reflex-like tendency to reject new evidence or new knowledge because it contradicts established norms, beliefs or paradigms. So children, if you want your new theory to be accepted, don't be a dick to your peers, 